welcome back to In Pursuit of Purpose Podcast. I am your host, your favorite host of your favorite show, Obing. I am here with episode two, season two. We're going to have some fun, <laughs> quite naturally. Welcome back because sometimes you can get lost in your own chatter and I want you to be tuned in to the chatter of this channel. In Pursuit of Purpose podcast has been doing great things, wonderful things, magnificent things for season two. We're bringing in all kinds of different types of guests, the kind of guests that you want to hear from. A guest that has a mix of varieties because you know me, I am into the natural world. And as I like to refer to myself and others as natural beings, because I believe that natural is the natural way. Natural is the right way to live. And so, you know, the earth is natural. The earth provides us. Mother nature provides us all of our natural needs. And so I believe that we're supposed to live like that, whether it comes to the food that we inherit into our bodies or the type of products we put on our skin or the type of style and way we wear our hair. And with that being said, today's guest is none other than a beautiful, phenomenal woman by the name of Melanie Washington. She is the CEO and founder of Good Hair Coaching. She is the author of the book, Natural Hair Cares, a step-by-step guide to healthy, curly, natural hair. And Melanie, she's a Florida native. She loves her Florida son, hot, hot, hot. And she has over 20 years in the management, marketing, public relations arena. Needless to say, she's an expert at being a businesswoman. So today's show, we're going to be talking about how to live your hair in a more natural way. And with that being said, I like our guest, Melanie, to do the talking on that. So here she is, guys. Enjoy episode two of In Pursuit of Purpose podcast. Our guest for today is the natural hair care coach and specialist, Melanie Washington. Thank you for joining the show. This is episode two of In Pursuit of Purpose podcast, back with season two. We got a phenomenal, phenomenal guest on the show. Melanie Washington, please introduce yourself to the audience. Well, hello, I'm Melanie Washington. I am the CEO and founder of Good Hair Coaching, as you mentioned. And um, basically what we do is we help, we um, Uh, we basically introduce women back to their natural roots. Uh, (laughs) Yes, we're taking our, we're building an organization to um, help take our sisters back to their natural roots and we're coaching them through the whole process. uh, So um, we're just just building that team of of bringing us back. (laughs) Right, right. Well, I just want to talk about real quick how um, I met you. We met at a authors well it wasn't really an author's event it was more so um it was a african fashion show that we met at yeah. and you was an author you was an author there or a feature one of the feature authors there at um an event in south saint petersburg where i live where i yeah. reside and um we met like that we met through that and um, we had just exchanged some information real quick that was at um tangela's bookstore Reader's Choice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Reader's Choice. Reader's Choice bookstore, and we. I had my book. I think I had a book out there. I, I, I've always had, you know, throughout the years, I've always had a book. But I think I had. I was there for the purpose of doing poetry. But I think I had a book out there as well. But we just kind of conversed. Did. 
we kind of build on that. And uh, from yeah. there, we were supposed to, we first talked about when we first met each other, we was talking about doing, we had really got like deeply um, intricate about doing something. You know, we were talking over the, um, you know, messenger for a little bit, trying to get something done, but you know, it took years, but we here, here we are. We are. <laughs> Uh, definitely, definitely. I want, I want to uh, have you just talk a little bit about the the book. What what started? Well, the journey first of all. What started the natural hair care journey for you? Well, you know what I I like to tell people. I literally um, fell back into my natural um, into this natural journey because um, I had been processed all my life since, since a little girl, since I could remember. So I had really never, I had never experienced my natural hair, but <clears throat> at the time that I, um, that, that, that I came back to this natural journey, I had met a young lady, um, in, uh, South St. Pete mm -hmm. who owned, uh, a Nako Nappy at the time. You ever heard of Nako Nappy? Nako Nappy? A Nako Nappy. No. They basically, um, were doing, they were the first, to do the sister locks here in the uh, Florida area. Mm -hmm. So I had met the owner, Joyce, mm -hmm. and she and I got to talking about natural hair when I was actually working. I was actually talking about financial services, mm -hmm. <laughs> but we ended up talking about hair. And she pretty much introduced me to my natural roots, okay. um, gave me some thorough education that got me more intrigued and excited about um, my natural hair. And at the time I was wearing, um, braids and mm -hmm. I was actually going natural without even knowing I was going natural. I was doing it. And, um, again, it just started from there and mm -hmm. it led to one thing led to another. I was already doing hair part-time in my home mm -hmm. and I was already, um, somewhat transitioning women there. And, um, you know, one thing led to another, and here, here I am. <laughs> hmm. You know, I didn't know that you can actually make a. You know, well, I, you know, the beauty business, the beauty, the hair, the hair and cosmetic business, that makes a, that's a lot of money. You know, that, that's a big revenue um, in, in this country per year. You know, it brings yeah. in billions and billions of dollars. But you know, that's, you know, when you got so many sisters, so many black women that have, you know, I, I think that our natural hair is very beautiful. Like, the, and it, we can do, we can do so many different things with our natural hair, just like you can yeah. do with the weaves and all of that other stuff. Um, we can. I, I, I like to ask like, you know, what made you seek this out? Like how did, besides, you know, what made you get into it, but what made you seek it out as a brand? Because this is, you know, trying to get into the hair business, you can make a lot of money, but trying to get into the natural hair care business, the, you know, a lot of people is landlocked into they, you know, they, they love, they, I'm sorry to say, but the sisters love going to get that hair done. You know, how you, yeah. how do you, how did you create that? How did you get into that, make it a business of branding so that, and, and get people to care about that? <laughs> well, you know what? It's so funny because when I, I went natural twice, I, I transitioned twice. Mm -hmm. The first time I transitioned, I, you know, it was a struggle. It was hard. I won't say it was hard. It was a struggle because I didn't grow up with my natural hair and mm -hmm. most of us didn't. And, and so we didn't, we don't understand our texture because we didn't have to work with it all of our lives. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? So the first time I went natural, it was a real struggle. And I, I learned some things um, by chance. Mm -hmm. And when I got my hair to a certain length, I actually went natural to do the sister locks. I was mm -hmm. going into lock. Mm -hmm. But when I saw the texture of my hair, I actually fell in love with the texture of my hair. Mm -hmm. And I thought, oh, I want to wear this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so mm -hmm. um, when I um, started working with my texture, it was always, my hair has always been full, always been really thick and just big. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to wear it out, but I wanted to wear it where I still had this thing just from being process, processed that I wanted my hair to be shaking and blowing in the wind and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So... I took some advice. It was bad advice, unbeknownst to me, <laughs> to go to a stylist and get a texturizer in mm. my natural hair. And I did that. And when I got the texturizer, my hair was bone straight. Mm. But I thought, because I'm ignorant, that I was going to be able to wash it and it was going to curl back up and I was going to have these bouncy, swaying in the wind curls. And mm. that did not happen. My mm. hair 
working straight. So what I didn't recognize was I was still working with the chemical when I did that. Mm -hmm. So I took my hair all the way back to the chemical process again, mm -hmm. which meant I had to transition again. But at this time, my hair was so long, the long strands were down the here. And it was beautiful, but I didn't want straight hair. Mm. So long story short, the hair started to break and I started to lose that hair in long strands. And there was no way I was going to be able to grow that out the way that I did initially. Mm. And I said, okay, now I got to start over. So I had to cut it off and start over. And the second time that I was transitioning, it was, my hair was coming back so fast. It was coming back so beautiful. And I thought, wow, if only I knew the things that I know now, knew then what I know now, mm -hmm. I would not have this, I would have not had a hard time the first time around. And so it was with that thought that good hair coaching was born. Okay. So I thought, you know what, here is what I can do. I can coach women mm -hmm. and not have them have to go through that struggle the first time around. Most of the time mm -hmm. we quit at that halfway point mm -hmm. where their hair is not quite right. Mm -hmm, and yeah. we're like, uh, uh I gotta go get my process. I gotta go get my yeah. relaxer. This is not working. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think because so, it just becomes a little too it becomes easy. It, that's the easy way out. Right. Right. It is. Yeah. It is. Yeah. But to be honest with you, relaxing your hair is not any more easier than taking care of your natural. People think that oh well natural hair is so hard. It's work. But guess mm. what? Processing is work too. Yeah, <laughs> it is. Work. Yeah, it is work. A lot just of work. a matter of yeah, it's a matter of just knowing what to do, and once you know that, you're good. See, let me. I want to ask you a question, but before I ask you a question, I want to preface it with this: while we're on that, while we right, while we're right there in the, in the meat of this, um, you know, I, I, men, truthfully, a lot of men really i don't think women recognize it and we don't mind women wanting to do it but a lot of men black men love a natural looking woman have you come to find that out a lot when it comes to natural versus you know fake or you know i don't want to say fake but weave and all that other stuff well you know what i do find that a lot i find i get believe it or not i, I feel like i get more well I've always had pretty decent hair. I'm not even going to lie about that. Mm -hmm. My my grandmother, we were fortunate when we were coming up that when she went to the beauty salon, she took us to the beauty salon. So our hair was really, really nice, even in its processed state. But when mm -hmm. I went natural, yes, I did find that um, men in general were very complimentary of my hair. Mm -hmm. And what was really interesting, it wasn't just men, black men, white men mm, okay yeah right and even women would literally stop me out in the oh my god i love your hair your hair is mm -hmm. so beautiful oh my mm -hmm. god i love your hair it's like wow you know it's yeah. like everybody is is drawn to that natural beauty it's it like, is it's something about it it's, you know? it's, it's the nature of man to just want to like things that you know that are natural you know it's um true. And I think that uh, even when I seen white, I seen white men do this with with, with black with black, with sisters. I've seen them. Can I touch your hair? Can I touch your? Because they're intrigued by the natural, the way it just, the way it can form, the way it just holds up, the way it just drops down, right. the way it just curls up, all that. You know, they're intrigued. Yeah, I, I get it. I mean, let's yeah. be, let's be, let's not be, you know, too, too. Uh, let's not be stig stigmatic here. But um, you know, their their women hair can only do one thing. And that's just drop down. <laughs> I'm trying, you know, I'm not trying to be, you know, you know, I'm not trying to be right. a racist here, but right. the unless is, they're born with curly hair, yes, their straight hair is going to be straight. I rarely see them. I rarely see them with curly hair. But while we're talking about that, is are you a natural? Are you naturally curly like that? I'm naturally curly, natural, natural. Oh, now I don't. I can wear my hair straight, and I have worn my hair straight, uh -huh. and I will do my hair straight. Um, on occasions just to get a nice, you know, little trim mm -hmm. on it just because, you know, we're straight, it can do that. But for the most part, I prefer to wear mm -hmm. my hair curly. But mm -hmm. here's the thing. What I do tell people is this, and I always have to make sure that women know this. Um, we're not against straight hair. Okay? Yeah. Because, yeah. Um, here's the thing. Like I told you, my hair was really nice straight. It was, it was, I, I have to say I had really beautiful, thick, thick mane of hair straight and it was well kept. 
So mm -hmm. um, that wasn't the problem. If I wanted to be straight today, I would still be straight, but mm -hmm. I would be natural, you know, mm -hmm. natural. Mm -hmm. And what we have to realize is, um, I think Mashia from the um, uh, Cutting It in Atlanta show, I don't know if you ever watched that. Mm -hmm. She said this in, in, on a panel of stylists. She was the only natural stylist on the panel. And wow. she said the whole world is going natural. Right. And she's right. She's right. right. Because um, whether it be by choice or be by default, you mm -hmm. are going to at some point go natural because the chemicals are going to break you down. Yeah. So it's going to happen. So it's just a matter of when. Wow. So what I tell women is don't um, run from this book because even if you're processed and relaxed, there are tips and strategies and regimens and techniques in my book that can still help you as well. So once you decide to make that thought, make that um, transition, you're halfway there. Half mm -hmm. your problems are already solved. You can just jump mm -hmm. right in and say, hey, you know what? I'm going to do this natural thing and keep it moving. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So, I mean, you know, there's nothing wrong with preferring curly hair and preferring straight hair because our hair is so blessed that it can do either or mm -hmm. <laughs> it's just a matter of us being able to get to the point where we can do it naturally again y'all we're talking to melanie washington the author of natural hair care step-by-step -step guide to healthy curly natural hair she's an expert and you being an expert um just real i want to ask this question what made you conscious of your hair but once i I want to ask that first, and then I also want to follow it up by saying, um, what made you conscious of your hair, and do you think or do you see women, black women, starting to become conscious of their their natural their hair? Um, yes, definitely. What made me conscious was, um, first of all, just being educated about my hair because mm -hmm. I never knew that my hair could even curl or wave or coil i didn't know my hair could even do that mm. and i don't think most women know that our hair can do that a lot of women would say to me hey you know if my hair was if you know they would say if i had good hair like you then mm. i would go natural too mm. hence the name good hair coaching okay right. good hair <laughs> but, coaching, um, right. yes i would tell women that we are we all have good hair Okay, we all have good hair. I didn't think I had good hair until I transitioned and realized what my hair could do. So we all have good hair. Um, so it's just a matter, I think education is the key. We have to be educated on what our hair can do and how to do it. Because again, we a lot of us weren't raised with our natural curly hair. I think mm -hmm. I had natural hair till I was about six or seven, maybe. Mm -hmm. And I just remember them being, after wearing straightenings for a while, mm -hmm. um, being transitioned into the relaxers. Mm -hmm. So all I knew since I was about seven or eight was relaxers. So mm -hmm. I was never trained or tamed to do anything to my natural hair. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, um, so I think education is key with us. And, and so that will make you, that that's what made me more conscious was when I realized all I had to do was be educated on my hair. Mm -hmm. Then I was okay with the transition. You, you know, I grew up with six sisters in my house. Um, I have six sisters, and uh, I used to see my mama doing all that. My, my mama used to be, she used to put these perms in their head. And my sisters would be going bald in, in the fifth and sixth grade. You understand what I'm saying? Like, the side of the, the edges, the side of the hair was, you know, starting to come out. You know, when you get a ponytail and you can start seeing some of your scalp? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, that ain't supposed to be happening at this age. No. Bro. You know <laughs> and and and, and yeah. I used to see my sisters like try and straighten their hair so they can kind of like get it full and long and cover up the balls. But I'm like, you know, these chemical these chemical things are killing us. And um, I really want you to talk about you know talk to the women out there who are um, using these chemicals. What's the what's the danger in these products? Well, you know what? Um, I, I can't speak from a scientific standpoint, mm -hmm. but I just look at little things with things that I like, you know, um, when you, I don't know if you saw the movie uh, that uh, Chris Rod did about good hair, but one thing that really, really stuck with me from that movie was when he um, showed the example of mm -hmm. what the product did to an aluminum can. <laughs> wow. wow. Can you imagine what it's doing 
to slowly over time, even if it's over time, what it's doing to your brain cells. Right. You, you see what I'm saying? Right. And so um, just just thinking about everything that that as time goes on, how everything is being designed to to kill us, really, <laughs> you might as well say. Mm-hmm. You know, even it's just in the air. You know, everything is processed. Everything is um, uh, supersized. Everything is just, you know, designed to just be so quick and so, but it's so dangerous. It's like they're they're doing anything to make it, to make it like microwave fast for you yeah. and, and easy to make microwave simple for you yeah. so you can just jump on it. But mm-hmm. I think, you know, even down to our foods, even down to things we put on our body, we have to start looking at going getting natural about a lot of things mm-hmm. in our life. Even, you know, with, with what's going on now, um, we're finding that a lot of people who are striving and doing things and, and really prevailing countries that are prevailing because there are some out there that they don't mention mm-hmm. are doing natural. Okay. They're doing some natural things that we aren't doing and um, it's causing us a problem. So, yeah. So I think, you know, just like with the earth, we have to really start looking at our bodies and our health and our hair from the, the, the starting with the crown, okay? Because the mm-hmm. crown in 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 um in encompasses our brain, yep. which is a very very part of our body. Yep. So yeah, starting with that crown and, and getting natural is what we need to consider for sure. Yeah, you know something I've noticed that once a woman or a man, you know, once you start to see men go natural, men well, well men always usually go natural. But my That's point my is like. When we start growing our locks out, it's like we start waking up. And then when sisters start growing, you know, going natural, and they, you're right. And so it usually starts from the head. And so yeah. um, you, 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 you hit something right there because usually what, I, what I'm always seeing is once a, a, a black person, and, I'll, and I want to refer this to black people, this, not that this platform isn't for others, but this right here conversation is, um, when I see black women or I see black men go natural, I always see a lot of other things start to turn natural in their lives. And so they start to yeah. use more natural products that they put in their body. They start to, you know, yeah. eat more natural. They start to drink more natural. They start to take care and put, you know, things on more natural. It starts to become a representative of your true self, of who you truly it really are, does. spiritually, mentally, emotionally, and culturally. And we live in a society where, you know, you cannot do that, especially if you're working for the, you know, the man. You cannot go natural. You can see now they are banning children in schools from oh, where yeah. cutting got these kids cutting their locks off. I've seen this all <laughs> over the internet, and parents allowing yep. this craziness. Yep. Because yeah, really, what does that have to do with their ability to learn? Right. You know what I'm saying? It, it really doesn't. Because again, like you were just saying, when you and I, I say this because it is important that we um, master our crown and really take care of our crown. Cause again, like I said, our brain is right there. You know what I'm saying? So we have to be able to think better and, and learn better. And again, I, like you said, I believe it does work into our conscious because now mm-hmm. our brain is free to think, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Yep. Our brain is free to think. It's not all that chemical is getting in there and just really, um, just damaging us. I mean, it's like yeah. it's whether you. It's like taking a drug. Whether yeah. you take it in um, in your mouth or you take it in through your yeah. scalp, you're, yeah. you're still taking it in. You know right. what I'm saying? So, right. You know, the same thing. So we really have to be conscious of that. And I think, like you said, when we start getting rid of that chemical, it, we start to really start seeing things a little different. And I yeah. think it does help with our conscience. Right. Oh, that was a that's that's a very good point. Um, you know, I'm I'm looking at um life right now in a very natural way. I do everything natural. I eat natural. Uh, you know, anything that I do, I try to be natural. I always call us natural beings and not human beings, right? And so I'm a I nat- like that. I have <laughs> to use that. <laughs> yeah, I I've been using that for a little bit. I'm a natural being because everything natural I, being. Yeah, I love it. So you have, you know, the good you have um, good hair coaching business and you have the book that you wrote natural hair care solutions and 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 i want to ask you um 
you know, what does your service provide? What does your um, business uh, and cons consultation um, offer up for people that want to go natural? Well, what we provide is good hair coaching by the book. Um, we, what we wanted to do when we wrote this book was not make it difficult. So there are a lot of natural books out there, a lot of them that point to, you know, the scientific structure of the hair and different things of that nature. And I love those books for myself because I'm, you know, researching and doing different things like that. But when a woman is just trying to just do her hair and, you know, be beautiful, I, um, I, I know when I was, I wasn't interested in all of that. I just want to know step by step how to take care of my natural hair. And so we wanted the book to be that simple where we offered just that. And so what the book does, what we encourage women to do is get good hair coaching by the book. And in the book, they're going to find that we have 12 natural, uh, 12 step-by-step -step regimens and 10 step-by-step -step techniques that are geared towards helping any woman to, um, transition and do things to do the things to their hair now in addition to that if they would like additional coaching then we do offer that as well where we walk them through step by step how to do things specific for their natural hair um texture and type and in the book we have a section where you can write notes and things of that nature so that you really make the regimens and techniques um specific for yourself so, um, so yeah, so we, we try to make it really, really simplified for the natural woman to transition and to maintain their hair. Cause not just the transition woman is suffering. Sometimes women just are having a struggle maintaining and mm -hmm. keeping up with the natural. So the book is designed to help with all of that. The book sounds very, very like inclusive. It sounds like it has all the steps there, all the guides. All of the how tos and what tos, what yeah. to do. So you, you it's, yeah. I, I would recommend to get the book then, and um, where people can just start off on the journey. And um, oh yeah, I, I wanted to throw something out there for myself. You know, um, when I hear the word <clears throat> good hair, you know, it has a, it, it kind of has a stigma to it because we're always talking about good hair. You know why? Because when we were coming up in we were raised to think that what good hair was, you know what I'm talking about? Right, right. <laughs> that it was curly, that it was wavy, that it was, no. Yeah, yeah. you're right. It is a stigma attached. And that's one reason why I utilize the name good hair to let mm -hmm. people know that all of our hair is good. Yeah. It is good. Yeah. I don't care what go. it's doing. Yeah. It is good. You and, know what I'm saying? Yeah. And so that's why I have to let women know that all, we, we all have good hair and our mm -hmm. hair can do whatever ever we want it to do that's why it's good because yeah. it can do anything it, you know what i'm saying our hair can do so that's many different things that is good yeah. hair right your hair can do five hair. different things that, that that's good hair you know what was, what yes and if you're if you're if you're, if you're one of the first things i do with women when i do coach them if they're if they decide to get coaching along with the book mm -hmm. is i we talk about what you really want for your hair because mm. what you have to stop doing is try to mimic what other people are doing mm. you know what i'm saying you gotta yeah. figure out what it is that you want there are women that they don't want i i have women that don't want curly hair they want their kinky you know afro type hair so mm. that's what we're working towards there are women who want waves you know what i'm saying and that's what we're working towards so we're working towards whatever your hair can do and what you're looking for your hair to do. You know what mm, I'm saying? Yes. Whatever you decide yes. that you want your hair to do, that is what's good. That's mm. what's good for you. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, so yeah, so definitely that stigma, we wanted to turn it around and make it something more positive Right. where there is no bad hair. You know, right. it's oh, yeah. not bad hair, good hair, bad hair. No, we all have good hair. There we is all no have good hair. Facts. Right. Facts, facts. That's right. <laughs> so, so me, I got that dry. I got that dry. Like no, you, put a, you put a match no, to my hair. My hair gonna it's start. Still you know? good. I can't go. I can't. I feel like it's I can't go. I feel like my hair is like a desert. My hair is like a desert up there. I feel like once you light a match, no brother. <laughs> it's still good. Dry. We just have to decide. We just have to determine what you need to bring out what you need to bring out with it. I want it, it to shine. Good. I want it to shine. <laughs> I want my hair to like have that sheen, that, that soul glow to it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I want some we can soul do, glow. We can get it to do whatever you want. <laughs> I'm going to be coming to see you for real. I'm telling you, yes. I need some soul glow in my hair. But 
I want to ask That's you awesome. I'm glad you mentioned that because men need to understand that we work with them as well. They have hair now. <laughs> That's good. That's great. Do y'all work with men's beers? Not, not that I have a big one, but do y'all work with men's beers just to put it out there? That I haven't tapped into, but I tell you what, I am looking at some of these guys who are selling the, these companies who are selling the beard products, uh -huh. and I'm hoping to be able to partner with someone who has the beard oils and things of that nature too. Uh -huh. But, you know, um, I haven't done much research on the beards, but I'm, I'm figuring that it pretty much works the same as the hair because yeah. it's still hair. Yeah. On yeah, your right, skin, right. on your face, on your—you yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. So yeah, so I'm well, thinking that we can still work with it the same. Well, I was just thinking more so in the uh, form of just offering a natural hair beer product, you know, something like that that can make it a little yeah. bit more, you know, clean, a little more professional looking, a little more yes. nice and sharp. Yeah. So exactly. Yeah. So question. definitely, we, we will be working with um um people who um in in, in fact when we. When you join Team Good Hair, there's mm -hmm. more than one way to do Team Good Hair. Um, I like to I like to compare it to something like a football team. You know, on a football team, you have a coach, right? And that coach is drawing up all the plays. Then mm -hmm. you have the quarterback who's out there calling out the plays, right? Mm -hmm. And then you have the team running the plays. And so with Good Hair Coaching, that's basically where we are. We are writing up the plays, we're, we're putting together all the different plays, and then we're partnering with stylists and people like that to um, call out the plays, and if you will, with, uh, with the team. And the team would be anybody who is out there looking to take care of their own hair and, and, and work with their own hair process. So um, Good Hair Coaching is more than just um, me and my book training individuals to do their own hair we're actually building a team of people and we're looking to partner with stylists and other people um to um to get to to help us to train more women who are on this journey because again as i mentioned earlier we're all going natural yeah <laughs> so the we're gonna going need natural. a team of women who can get out there and stylists and people like that who can uh, take on this army of women and helping them to get back to their natural roots. Right. The, the world is going natural and we see that even now more so today. You know, the world oh, is yeah. like, we need a break from y'all right now. <laughs> and so it's like, we need to get back to our natural self. Y'all putting too much. We do. We do. So it's a cleansing that's happening. And I think that's more so um, earthly. I think that's, and it should be spiritually for us as well. But yep. before I ask you my Final, I like to have three questions. I always ask my guests three questions I come up with um, that comes to me. And it's just all okay. kind of like key. But before I ask, I want to ask, who is Melanie's natural hair coach or inspiration? Who do you go to to stay inspired by, you know, the, the journey? To stay inspired um, just all over, all around, spiritually in the whole nine I would have to say, I, I have to go to uh, Jehovah God. The word mm -hmm. is what mm -hmm. helps keep me um, together. Okay, <laughs> okay. Yeah. And I have spiritual sisters and brothers that are there to, of course, you know, reinforce those things. Um, but namely, when, when you listen to him, you know, mm -hmm. you, you're going to get the inspiration. You're going to you're going to stay inspired, and you're going to um, stay growing. You're going to continue to grow. So that is my that's where my main coaching comes from for mm -hmm. my entire life. <laughs> okay, I got you. Hey, we all got somebody that we look up to on the higher higher spectrum, right? You know. Oh yes, I, I think we have to. Our, it, it, it's, in, it's in us to do that. Yeah, it you is. Know? It really is. We want to call out. We want to reach out. You know. Yes. So, yes. so Melanie, I, I want to ask you these three. I love getting into this sec section of the um, show because I kind of like. I'm intrigued to hear um, more so people's different answers, how they different, how they differ. And uh, so, I, I just want to ask you, um, out of these three, where does your drive to be great come from? Well, you know what, I, I um. I think I started out with it's just being family and, and really wanting to have something, a legacy or something to pass on oh, to nice. family because we don't generally do that. We, we don't have enough of us doing that. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And so um, 
if I could just leave something for my family to carry on, to, mm-hmm. to live comfortably. And I'm not saying they have to be um, basketball famous, wealthy, but wealthy in a sense where they can take care of their needs and they can take care of their wants without mm-hmm. having to um, depend on anything or anybody else. If that could leave that kind of legacy for my family, I have my first grandson and I'm so excited. Wow. If I can leave that for them, I'm, Wait a I'm, I'm happy. <laughs> I'm Wait a happy. minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I know you just threw, you just kind of like threw that out there. Like, yeah, but wow. <laughs> you a gra- you a, you a grandma. Yes. Well, actually, I'm a mama. Mama, a Jima, a Jima. He calls me mama. Mama. <laughs> and, it's so funny because his mom, when she was pregnant with him, she said, what do you, what would you like him to call you? I know you don't want him to call you grandma. I said, oh, he can call me mama. She's mama. like, wait, what? If he calls you mama, what is he going to call me? I said, mm-hmm. honey, you have to work that out because he's mama. <laughs> Are you going to work that out with him? <laughs> you got to work that out because I'm mama. <laughs> so. That's funny. I never even thought of yeah. it. I, I always hear, you know, they transition to like Gma or something. Like, you know, it kind of feels cool. Yeah, I guess. I'm mama. Uh, you mama. I'm mama. <laughs> okay. I'm mama. Okay, okay. You know, there's something I wanted to tag on to that piggyback that when, when you um was talking about uh, what inspires you to be great when it came to your family and leaving a legacy. Oh, you know, we both are authors and once you I feel like, you know, that book right there is already your legacy. It's here forever. You know, um, your children yeah. are going to be able to go back to it. They're going to be able to pull from it. They're going to be able to, you know. So I always like to say an, a true inheritance is not what you leave for your children, but what you leave in your yeah. children. Yeah, that's true. That's a yep. true inheritance. So they take that. You've yep. already you've already you are already a legend. You've already left a legacy. You know what I'm saying? So I think mm-hmm. it, I think your kids are on a righteous path right now. <laughs> um, <laughs> in the end. Yeah. In the end, what is your end goal with all of your, with all of your life? Like, in the end, what is your end goal with what you're doing? What is your end goal? Well, my end goal is to uh, make it into paradise. Make it into paradise, <laughs> and That's- to take and to and to uh, and to conv- and let women know that um, listen, th- this is what you go- this is what you're gonna have to deal with. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? Mm-hmm. If you if you are a person who believes and, and, and understands that paradise does exist. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is what you've taken into paradise. You've taken what God gave you. So yeah. why not start working with it now and, and learning about it now and understand it now? Because yeah, you won't be, you won't be able to find a relaxer there. You won't be able to find mm-hmm. so there. you won't be able to find any of that. So mm-hmm. why not be uh, accepting of what, what you have, and, and start working with it and say, hey, you know what? Thank you, Lord. I'm so grateful and I'm so excited. And, and just ask him to bless you, your your hands, to do the work and, mm. and, and make it what he intended it to be. So mm. that's what like I'm hoping. It. That's what I hope the end goal is for myself and for others. Very nice. Very nice. On In Pursuit of Purpose, what is Melanie's purpose? What purpose is Melanie's purpose? My purpose, Hmm. and I think it's all of our purpose, whether we want to admit it or not, and it just goes back to spiritual, just um, our purpose is to, is to um, really serve the creator, that is our real purpose, Mm -hmm. so Mm -hmm. getting back to that, and it's work every day, I'm not perfect, I'm still working on some stuff. Yeah, we still, we still got a lot of things to work out, all of us here, me, me, and definitely, I'm in the front of the line on that one. You know what I mean? Like I got yeah. some major things to work out. Um, anything yeah. besides um, I'm gonna allow you to a minute to um, go into um all your whereabouts, all your social medias, anything you want to plug. But before you do that, um, leave some lasting words with the um uh, with any the sisters or anybody ready trying to go on a natural journey or something inspirational you want to say to them. Well, I just like to say again, I know uh, the trans. Some of us are thinking about transitioning, and we're like, 
I would do it, but I just don't know how. Um, um, some of us are in that transition and we're struggling. We're watching the YouTube videos and we're thinking, why can't I look like this YouTube girl? <laughs> you know, <laughs> the IG girl. <laughs> <laughs> the Instagrams, huh? We trying to look like. Why can't I? Why can't I just look like her? Why can't my hair look like hers? Just um, and so I just want to um leave this encouragement with women to let them know that um, it it can happen for you. It's just you have to be open to um getting back to you. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I mean, we live in a world where we think you know we should do what everybody else does. You know, we should look like everybody else looks and, and things of that nature. So, but when we just get, if you could just get back to you and be happy with you and say, okay, this is what I got to do. I got to find my look. Mm -hmm. I got to find, you know, my style, you know, and I got to find my techniques and regimens that work for me mm -hmm. and, and get back to me and be okay with me. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Be okay with my look and, and the way that I'm presenting myself. You know, I, I'm, I've never been a trendy person mm -hmm. and I'm glad I'm happy of that because uh, trying to follow trends not only can be too expensive, but it's just it just gets ridiculous, especially when the trend just doesn't work for you. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? So uh, get back to you. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Sometimes that, that's classic. Sometimes that's mm -hmm. traditional. Sometimes it's it, it can be whatever it wants to be, but it needs to be you. So I encourage women to do that, even on this natural hair journey. Just yeah. there's they say that there's only there's you know there's only one you you know original so that's right. you know, there can't be a copy that's right. so should be happy just no copy you. no copy exactly so um can you tell people where they can find you any social media contacts how they can get in touch get consulting um and while you're answering that answer this for me when you go into it do you have any products in any stores so plug that with it if you do um for natural hair and so how can people find you? Okay, well, you can actually find us. We're online at www.goodhaircoaching.com. Um, we're also on Instagram and Facebook at Good Hair Coaching. Okay, and so you can definitely go there. Um, you can uh, join Team Good Hair online, Team Good Hair, uh, at Team Good Hair on Facebook, and also on Instagram. Um, and to find the book, again, you can go to the website, the book is also on Amazon, um, so uh, you can look there. But if you go to the website, it's easier because it will take you to Amazon. <laughs> um, yeah, right, right. You can go, yeah, you can go right there and, and get the book there. And you can look into getting coaching if that's what you need as well. So um, mm -hmm. that's something, again, that we're um, offering women in addition to having the book. It is just so much easier for us to coach you once you have the book because, again, we make it unique to your particular texture and type of hair when we're working with you so yeah so definitely check that out and look look for our ebook coming out mm -hmm. <laughs> the ebook is uh the good hair gospel mm -hmm. um 10 reasons why the truth about good hair is no lie so look for that um coming soon uh it's a real like i say goes back to the education that we need um, to start readjusting our conscience when it comes to our hair. So definitely look for that. That will help you um, with either making a decision or determining the win. Because again, mm. you are natural natural at some point. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The win, <laughs> um, yep. It is determined to win. Yeah, exactly. So that's basically what you can look out for from Good Hair Coaching. And of course, our Curl Power event. I'm super excited about that. Every time I think about it, I just want to jump and do backward flip that I can't wow. do. But <laughs> Curl Power is an event that um, I think women have been waiting for, and, and it's it's long overdue. And so we're really excited about putting that event together for June. Um, unless uh, situations turn take a turn for the worst, we are uh, planning that event in June. So if you are serious about your natural hair care and you want to um, really get more empowered about your natural hair care, Curl Power is the place for you to be in June. Sounds like okay. a place. 
That yes, sounds like the place. Is, yeah. This is where we're going to be. And our theme is care, confidence, and control. And it is just what it says. We are going to get into the care of our hair, hands-on care of our hair. We're also going to get into building our confidence in the confidence of our children. Mm. And we're going to get into taking back control of our natural hair care industry. Um, mm. It is the one thing that we actually own is our natural, okay? Wow. And people can own this, the chemicals, they can own all of that stuff, but natural is something we own. And we should not let anybody come in and take that from us. We've been sitting on front porches since I remember sitting on the front porch, getting my hair braided when I was two, three years old. So this is something we own. We've mm. always owned. And mm. we're, we should not be willing to let anyone come in and take that from us. So again, keeping and taking control of our natural hair industry, because this is our so wow. the curl power is is powerful and we're excited about it. It's not another expo, it's mm. not another seminar, it's mm. not another workshop, it's curl power, and right. you should be. <laughs> oh, Ooh, I feel like I'm yes. I, I like <laughs> yes, brother. I get it, I get that excited too. I get trouble <laughs> when I think about it. <laughs> I, I gotta do something to get there because that was Yes, you gotta be there, my brother. I'm, yes. I'm, 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 I'm convinced. I'm convinced. I need to be there. Yes. But, huh, yes, Melanie, <laughs> I like to take a MOG moment, which means a moment of gratitude, and I just like to thank you. I like to say to you, Melanie Washington, author of Natural Hair Care. Thank you for doing your part and bringing your spirit to this world. Thank you for allowing us to be gifted with your presence, with your beauty, with your power. Thank you for taking on your natural hair care journey so that other little girls and women have someone and somewhere that they can come to and start their journey. Thank you for putting it out there. Thank you for being the person that you are, not just speak right now, just blessings and power and just energy, just all I want to make sure is that you get all that you are hoping and wishing and praying for, that you are surrounded by good relationships and that business relationships come to your fruition, that everything is manifested to your liking, that all of your prayers are answered the way you designed them, that everyone that you want to come into your circle come because you are doing the work, you are doing the great work of putting yourself out there and allowing people to come to you to be open about themselves, sharing their personal journeys. And some come with tears, some come with smiles because of the awakening, and some come with joy, some come with excitement, like you just had shared with me right here. And so people are gonna be coming, and I just and I just speak right now that the, the website gets flooded, and I speak right now that the book gets sold out and becomes a bestseller. And I speak right now that the seminars and the workshops and the events that you do become huge in numbers and does great things for you and for the world and not to speak that your legacy is not only left here for your children only but for my children and children yes. to come after that and other children oh, yeah. in the world to come so thank you melanie thank you thank you thank you wow, thank you thank you i appreciate that i really do and i receive it thank you so much yes. and thank you along with a lot a lot of the um uh, podcasters and, and interviewers and, and people out there who've been giving me the opportunity to come on and talk more about my book, to talk more about the journey, talk more about um, just getting back to this because I think it's important that we get this word out and that um, there's platforms out there that give us the opportunity to get this out there. So thank you so much for that. <laughs> I appreciate that. All right. So that's the show. Hey, Everybody, thank you for joining In Pursuit of Purpose podcast, episode two, with author, coach, entrepreneur, businesswoman, Melanie Washington. As you heard her say, find her on all of her media sites, all of her websites, and yeah, get the book also. And make sure you, you yourself and your daughters get to her Curl Power events. I just want to say, you know how I like to end my show. I love you. I love me. I love us. And for that, we out. Once again, guys, I just want to say thank you to Melanie Washington for joining the show. 
um in these times we just uh need to understand that yes we are going through rough rough patches right now of social distancing and we want to connect but the best advice that i can lend you is to continue to find ways to connect to people continue to find ways to share continue to find ways to get the message out of love hope and inspiration i just want to say thank you for tuning in thank you for downloading the show and you can find us right back here again for the rest of season two